This March 20, 2014, regular meeting number 16 of the Fairfax County School Board will now come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, a moment of silence, and the performance of the national anthem by the Bramar Park Elementary School 4th and 5th grade choir under the direction of Justin Harser and Christian Millet. Mr. Moon, if you would give me a moment of privilege. I just want to tell you, students, that is the most, I don't know if you are giving them elocution lessons, that is the most well-articulated Pledge of Allegiance I've ever heard from a group of students on this stage. Absolutely beautiful. And also national anthem, of course. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Again, there was a Bramar Park Elementary School 4th and 5th grade choir under the direction of Justin Hartzell and Christine Miller. Thank you, thank you so much. M Mr. Chairman, while the students are leaving, can we have all the parents of students that are here tonight yeah. like to stand up? Absolutely. All the parents stand up. Thank you for bringing your children. Thank you all for that wonderful rendition. Thank you all very much. I'm not going to be offended if he had to leave. <laughs> Next, we have a certification of a closed meeting compliance. In order to comply with the section 2.23712D of the Court of Virginia, it is necessary for the board to certify that since the Fairfax County School Board convened the motion closed meeting on March 20, 2014, to the best of its members' knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the board during the closed meeting. The foregoing shall also be deemed to include certification of each school board member who served on a student disciplinary committee that those closed committee 
meetings are lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Section 2.23711A2 of the Code of Virginia, and only that, and that only student disciplinary matters were heard, discussed, or considered in those closed committee meetings. Is that a motion? Moved by Mrs. Church and seconded by Mrs. Rouse. All those in favor, raise your hand. The vote unanimous with a Mrs. McLaughlin. Absent. Next, we have announcements. A few announcements before we continue tonight's meeting. Um, Mrs., uh, Mrs. McLaughlin, who was able to attend the closed meeting earlier this evening, had, had to leave for personal reason. Uh, if you would like to access tonight's agenda and related meeting documents, you can do so by going to the FCPS website, select school board, and then upcoming meetings and agendas. The meeting is also being streamed live on FCPS website homepage. Click on watch school board live. If you have signed up to speak before the board during citizen participation, please turn in 16 copies of your remarks at this time to the deputy clerk sitting in the section to my right. I would like to review, if you would like to review a copy of the agenda and an agenda item that is being discussed tonight, that information is also on the table by the auditorium entrance. Please turn off or silence your cell phone. Is there any Boy Scout in audience? If there is one, I would like to recognize you. If not, before I ask Mr. Ash for further announcements, uh, I would like to note that as a part of the board's plan to add an auditor position to the audit office, I am pleased I am pleased to announce that board has hired Mr. Chris Holton, actually Dr. Chris Holton, as an audit manager. We are pleased we are pleased to welcome Dr. Holton to FCPS from Colorado. Mr. Ash. April 2014 is Autism Awareness Month. Autism is a complex developmental disability that affects an individual's social interaction and communication. It is known as a spectrum disorder because it affects each individual in different ways and to varying degrees. Autism Awareness Month, celebrated every year in April, provides an opportunity for families, friends, and local communities to raise public awareness about autism. It is sponsored by the Autism Society of America, the ASA. The 2014 theme is A Better World for Autism. Individuals and communities can get involved by participating in activities sponsored by their local ASA chapter or by promoting services related to autism. Mathematics Awareness Month is held each year in April to increase public understanding and uh, public understanding of and appreci appreciation for mathematics. Sponsored by the Joint Policy Board for Mathematics, the goal is to increase the visibility of mathematics as a field of study and to communicate the power and intrigue of mathematics to a larger audience. The 2014 theme is Mathematics, Magic, and Mystery, a celebration of the use of mathematics in everything from magic squares to Mobius bands to magical card tricks and illusions, engaging people in creative and rational thinking via brain-teasing challenges. April 6th through 13th is National Volunteer Week. Established in 1974, National Volunteer Week has grown exponentially in scope each year since, drawing the support and endorsement of all subsequent U.S. presidents, governors, mayors, and other respected elected officials. National Volunteer Week is about inspiring, recognizing, and encourage, encouraging people to seek out imaginative ways to engage in their communities. It is, it's about demonstrating to the nation that by working together, in unison, we have the fortitude to meet our challenges and accomplish our goals. National Volunteer Week is about taking action, encouraging individuals and their respective communities to be at the center of social change, discovering and actively demonstrating their collective power to, fo to foster po positive transformation. During the 2012-2013 school year, 195 schools, centers, and alternative high schools reported that 55,138 volunteers donated 807,251 hours of volunteer service to FCPS schools. 
If those volunteers had been paid at the entry level instructional assistant salary of fourteen eighty eight an hour, the bill for 2012-2013 would have totaled over $12 million. The educational value of the work performed by the volunteers is, of course, incalculable. Thank you, Mr. Ash. Next, we have a recognition of a National Library Week, Library Month, and Mrs. Reed. Thank you, Chairman Moon. It is my pleasure to read the, the, uh, <clears throat> rec the I'm sorry, not recommendation. Oops. Mama? <laughs> All right, let's start over. <laughs> Okay, no problem. We, we love kids here. I'm proud to read, uh, read this. All right, it's National Library Week and School Library Month, April 2014. Just today I was at the used book sale at the Oakton Library and it was absolutely packed and it reminded me about the importance of literacy and I saw the passion for reading and for lifelong learning in that room today and I know we share that here in our community. National Library Week is a national observance, observance sponsored by the American Library Association and libraries across the country each April. It is a time to celebrate the contributions of our nation's libraries and librarians and to promote library use and support. All types of libraries, school, public, academic, and special, participate. This year, National Library Week will be observed April 13th through 19th with the theme, Lives Change at Your Library. School Library Month is the American Association of School Librarians celebration of school librarians and their programs. Every April, school librarians are encouraged to create activities to help their school and local community celebrate the essential role that strong school library programs play in a student's educational career. The school board welcomes this opportunity to commend Fairfax County Public Schools librarians and to express its gratitude for the energy, knowledge, vision, and passion that they tirelessly and unselfishly provide to our school system. Please join me in a round of applause for our librarians and I invite anyone who is here who is a librarian to please come forward for a picture.
We now have a recognition of a National Board Certified Teachers. And on behalf of the school board, I would like to welcome members of the leadership team, the National Board Certified Teachers and guests. We are pleased to recognize the Fairfax County teachers who have earned or renewed National Board Certification during 2012-2013 school year. It is truly an honor to pay tribute to each of you for your dedication and contributions to the education of our students as they master the skills necessary to be successful 21st century thinkers and responsible citizens. The success of FCPS is based on teachers being committed to nurturing students by working in partnership with their families and collaborating with colleagues. These National Board Certified Teachers are members of an elite group and deserve our sincere thanks and congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Karen Garja. Thank you, Chairman Moon, members of the board, um, and good evening to all of our special guests. Um, I will tell you that uh, we, on behalf of our leadership team and the school board, we'd like to congratulate each of you for earning this, very, this advanced uh, teaching credential. Um, I will tell you that these individuals devote countless hours uh, to this process. Um, so you're leaders that are dedicated to student learning on a daily basis, and you make a difference in the classroom by using reflective practice to drive instruction. I'm familiar with the process, and I know it's very arduous, and it certainly says a lot about you as, as leaders and about ed as educators that you're willing, you are willing to go um, to this, through this process. Um, the National Board Certified Teachers develop and demonstrate advanced teaching knowledge, skills, and practices in, in order to be recognized by their peers as accomplished educational professionals. Since the program began in FCPS, I'm proud to share that there are 446 teachers who've become certified through this program through FCPS. Uh, and I'm also pleased to announce that we have almost 300 of them that are still teaching in our classroom. So I think that says a lot about what great teachers we have throughout this uh, division. So uh, again, congratulations to each one of you. We're very proud of you, and we thank you for being part of S FCPS. And I'd like to now introduce Dr. Kathy Waltz, who will introduce each one of these talented educators. Thank you, Dr. Garza. I'm delighted to participate in the recognition of the accomplishments of these distinguished teachers, along with the school board, leadership team, administrators, and guests. The teachers we are recognizing tonight have earned their national board certification by successfully completing a voluntary assessment program designed to recognize effective and accomplished teachers who have met high standards based on what teachers should know and be able to do. In order to earn certification, the teacher must analyze their teaching practice and ability to meet the needs of their students, submit videos of their teaching, and provide student work samples that demonstrate academic growth. The reflective analyses must validate a strong command of content, the ability to design appropriate learning experiences that advance student learning, the use of assessments to inform instructional decision making, and partnerships with colleagues, parents, and the community. As I share with you what it takes to be a National Board Certified Teacher, maybe it would be better to hear directly from a couple of tonight's honorees. With us are Dr. Aaron Wigington from West Springfield High School and Douglas Graney from Herndon High School who would like to share their story on their impact of the entire educational system. Aaron and Doug, please come to the podium. Thank you. We're here tonight to actually say congratulations to our new NBCTs. We're very proud of you. And we thought one of the best ways that we could honor you is to let you know uh, about some opportunities that might be opened up to you. Um, especially for the brand new National Board Certified Teachers, this certificate will open up opportunities for you and we want you to take advantage of them. Uh, Doug and I actually met in Richmond. You want to talk about that a little bit? Um, sure. So we met in Richmond. We were part of a five-person team selected by the Virginia Education Association to develop and deliver a support program 
for national board candidates um, across Virginia. A couple years after working together, I saw her in the Phoenix airport only to find out that we had been tapped to work on another project together. And what a project that was. Uh, let me back up just a couple of steps and let you know that one day I was opening up my email, well actually I was looking at my email, and I saw an email with a subject line, an invitation from Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. And I was like, oh yeah, right. This has got to be junk mail. And I almost deleted the email. My social studies nerdum and curiosity got the best of me, and I'm really glad it did, because I did open that email, and it really was from Justice O'Connor, she had asked me, and subsequently Doug as well, to be part of a 12-teacher team to develop a curriculum on civics that was going to be her legacy once she left the court. Why did this come to me? National Board Certification. So, Aaron and I spent a week in Arizona at the Sandra Dale Connor Law School at Arizona State University then another week at Georgetown Law, writing curriculum to help middle school and high school students understand the tenets and importance of civics. We were treated to an intimate dinner with the justice and were able to present our curriculum units at the Supreme Court. Now, for those of you that are not social studies nerds like us, this is like nirvana, mm -hmm. okay? Um, this was really big stuff for us, and um, we are we feel very fortunate that this recognition, this designation, uh, uh, designation has opened up these types of opportunities for us. And in fact, we want to let you know that this is coming for you. And we wanted to share, we wanted to share this brief story with you to let you know that our National Board Certification opened doors for us that would not have been possible without it. Look for professional opportunities and seize them. Uh, in fact, after the R Courts project, I was also offered an opportunity to be a fellow at the U.S. House of Representatives, again, because of my national board status. So our message to you is, as Doug said, look for these opportunities, seize these opportunities, and most of all, open your email. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron and Doug. What an incredible story. Dr. Garza, please join me now to present the certificates to the honorees. Honorees, when your name is called, please come forward to accept your certificate and walk towards the raised steps and wait for the group picture. After all the names have been called, we also invite the members of the school board, cluster assistant superintendents, and principals to join us for the group picture. The first reader is Jim Caker. Cluster 2 Assistant Superintendent. Thank you, Dr. Waltz. It gives me great pleasure to recognize the uh, Cluster 2 uh, teachers that are nationally board certified. Uh, Karen Halliday of Freedom Hill Elementary School earned the Early Childhood through Young Adulthood Library Media Certificate. Principal uh, Scott Bloom. Aaron Snell of Freedom Hill Elementary School earned the Early Childhood through Young Adulthood Exceptional Needs Specialist Certificate. Again, Principal Scott Bloom. The next reader is Douglas Tyson, Cluster 3 Assistant Superintendent. I'm extremely pleased, thank you Dr. Waltz, to recognize the teacher in Cluster 3. Andrea Trumbull of Park Lawn Elementary School earned the Middle Childhood Generalist Certificate, and the principal is Susan Aykroyd. Congratulations. The next reader is Deborah Tyler, Cluster 4 Assistant Superintendent. Good evening. Isabel Messmore of Riverside Elementary School in Abstentia earned the Early and Middle Childhood English as a New Language Certificate, and her principal is Lori Morton. Our other candidate is Hoda Quake of Island Creek Elementary School, earned the Early Childhood and Generalist Certificate, and her principal is Mike Macrina, and we all know she's a mom. <laughs> The next reader is Frances Ivey, Cluster 5 Assistant Superintendent. And I'm pleased to recognize two teachers in Cluster 5. 
The first is Christine Elsner of Lee High School, who earned the Adolescence and Young Adulthood Mathematics Certificate, and her principal is Abe Jeffers. And we'd also like to congratulate Tiffany Hitz of Twain Middle School, who earned the Early Adolescence Through Young Adulthood Music Certificate. And her principal is Bay Chung. The next reader is Angela Atwater, Cluster 6 Assistant Superintendent. Thank you. It is my honor to introduce Rosemary Nevin of Terrace Center Elementary School, who earned her Early Childhood Generalist Certificate, Principal Greg Brodemarco. The next reader is Linda Burke, Cluster 7 Assistant Superintendent. Good evening and congratulations to all of our honorees. First in Cluster 7 tonight, we have Jackie Diggs of Eagle View Elementary School, who earned the Early Childhood Generalist Certificate, and her principal is Dr. Patty Granada. Next, Christina Owens of Fairfax High School, who earned the Adolescence and Young Adult Science Certificate, and her principal is David Goldfarb. Next is Kelly Plum of Providence Elementary School, who earned the Middle School Childhood Generalist Certificate, and her principal is Jesse Kraft. Thank you. At this time, we would like to invite the members of the school board, cluster assistant superintendents, and principals to come forward for a group photo with the new National Board Certified Teachers. We would ask the school board members and cluster assistant superintendents to remain on the risers for the next photo. Our next reader is Anita Taylor, cluster one director. Good evening. The following national board certified teachers have renewed their certificates. Honorees, when I call your name, please come forward to accept your certificate and walk towards the raised step and wait for the group picture. Karen Baxter of Belvedere Elementary School renewed the Middle Childhood Generalist Certificate, Principal Cecilia Vanderhei. <laughs> Catherine DeVille of Woodley Hills Elementary School, renewed Early Childhood Generalist Certificate, Principal Sharon Aldridge. <laughs> Douglas Graney of Hernan High School, renewed the Adolescence and Young Adulthood Social Studies History Certificate, Principal William Bates. Mary Wolf of Hernan High School renewed the Early Childhood Through Young Adulthood Library Media Certificate, Principal William Bates. <laughs> Anne
Anthony Petrus, in absentia of Hernan High School, renewed the Adolescence and Young Adulthood Science Certificate, Principal William Bates. <laughs> Alexandra Toshinsky Tush of Kent Gardens Elementary School renewed the Early and Middle Childhood World Languages Other Than English Certificate, Principal Holly McGuigan. Our next reader is Fabio Zuluaga, Cluster 8, Assistant Superintendent. Good evening. It's such an honor and a pleasure to recognize these fine educators. Patricia Dimitris from Falls Church High School, who renewed the early adolescence through young adulthood career and technical education certificate. Principal Michael Johi. Please come forward. Jamie Sawatsky of Rocky Run Element Middle School renew the Early Childhood Adolescent Social Studies History Certificate, Principal Anthony Terrell. <laughs> Mark Tierney of Holly Meadows Elementary School renew the Early Childhood through Young Adulthood Library Media Certificate, Principal John Gates. Dr. Erin Wigginton of West Spring High School renew the Adolescent and Young Adulthood Social Studies History Certificate, Principal Mark Greenfelder. <laughs> and Christine Moritz of London Town Elementary School earned the Early and Middle Childhood Literacy Reading Language Arts Certificate, Acting Principal Teresa Fennessy. At this time, we're going to have another photo opportunity with our renewed National Board Certified Teachers. Principals, please join us. Thank you. Please join us as we congratulate this year's Fairfax County Public Schools National Board Certified Teachers. Board will take a short recess. It is an opportunity for the board, board members to find out who really likes board members who are bold enough to stay till the end of the, end of the meeting.
back on record. Uh, thanks to everyone who is still with us in the audience. You are the true lovers of a school board. Next order of business is citizen participation. Citizens who want to address either a new business or an action item as listed on the school board regular meeting agenda may sign up online beginning at 6 a.m. Three business days. Let me repeat that. Let me do that again. The next order of business is citizen participation. Fairfax County says citizens who would like to address the school board should arrange to be placed on the speaker's list by signing up online at www.fcps.edu or by calling the school board office at 571-423-1075. If the concern is a group concern, please consider appointing a spokesperson. And while the spokesperson is speaking, those in support may stand to show their support. The school board will allow your statements involving issues that have been scheduled for public hearings, such as capital improvement program, budget and boundaries, or personal attacks on any person. Complaints regarding individual students or school-based employees should not be raised at a public meeting. Any such concern should be directed to the appropriate school principal or other school officials. Citizens are encouraged to write to school board on any school-related topic. Speakers are requested to limit their remarks to not more than three minutes and provide at least 16 copies of their presentation for distribution to the board. Tonight, six citizens have signed up to address the board. Uh, Stefan Spitz, to be followed by Kimberly Adams, Denise Bibi, Susie Phipps, George Bacera, and Sharice Glassman. Stefan Spitz. Good, e good evening, Superintendent Garza, Chairman Moon, and members of the board. And my name is Steven Spitz. Uh, I live in, I live actually right behind Bailey's Elementary School, where I have personally witnessed all the portables going up in the last dozen years. Um, and I congratulate you all in establishing a new school building. Um, I uh, live in Lake Barcroft on Beachway Drive, and the Lake Barcroft Association has suggested that the school, uh, this new school be named after Thurgood Marshall. And let me tell you why that's the case. Number one, Thurgood Marshall lived in the community from 1968 until he died in 1973. He chose to live in the community because he believed in integration. He believed in diversity, and most importantly, he was the person who argued successfully Brown versus Board of Education, which of course established the principle of equal educational opportunities. And I think it goes without saying that but for Thurgood Marshall, we wouldn't have all these students of different races, religions, and ethnic backgrounds in school together in the state of Virginia. Um, and naming of a school is a teachable moment. It teaches the community, it teaches the students, it teaches the parents, it teaches uh, everybody. Because if you name the school after a significant person, the first question is, who was he or she, and why is the school being named after him or her? That's an important educational moment. So. I submit that it is past due time that a school be named after Thurgood Marshall. And unfortunately, in our community, there's a, the high school is Jeb Stewart High School, a Confederate general. Now, I will quote a neighbor of mine who told me that his daughter said that she didn't want to go to Jeb Stewart High School because he was a Confederate general. She wants to go somewhere else. She's ashamed of that. We have Bailey's named after a circus owner, Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. Uh, I have a broader argument to make here, that we should think about what we're naming schools, and we should be making significant moments of the school name. Now, 
The other thing that I wanted to say quickly is the process, which I think was inadequate in terms of the community discussion yesterday. Uh, we did not know who got to vote until less than 24 hours before the vote. Nobody knew in the broader community who the candidates were for the naming, and that was not revealed until people got there. The community associations Mr. were not... Mr. would you wrap up your Yes, time? I will. The community associations were not permitted to submit the names, therefore the parents and the students were not aware of the community uh, association suggestions until the meeting itself. I find that very inadequate and that in the future and even now, there be a overall community discussion where the parents, the community, the students, everybody knows who's running, who the, who the names are, and who is voting. Those okay. are elementary principles. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you. Next speaker is Kimberly Adams, to be followed by De Dennis Beebe. Good evening, Chairman Moon, members of the school board, and Dr. Garza. My name is Kimberly Adams, and I come before you as the president of the Fairfax Education Association. I'm here to speak to you regarding the administration's decision to close Landmark Career Academy. The Landmark Career Academy, or LCA, has been a successful alternative education model for 20 years, graduating, graduating 294 students over the time period. By all measures, the LCA has been successful in meeting the needs of their students. For 20 years, the professionals in the LCA have adapted practice and technology to graduate students who might have otherwise dropped out. Because of the work of these educators, FCPS has seen a smaller dropout rate at each of their base schools. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to review the binder that you received, highlighting the programs that LCA offers, and have an appreciation for the unique opportunity that this academy offers to its students. We believe that the LCA fills a need in our education community. As the president of the largest union in Fairfax County, I'm equally concerned about how the entire decision-making process unfolded. According to Regulation 8130.7, there are five tasks that are part of any decision to close a school. In fact, while it is a small school, LCA is a school and issues diplomas to graduates in every other way and functions as a school. By all accounts, the students, parents, and educators have been left in the dark about what will happen to their school, their jobs, and a successful model for educating young adult learners. We believe that FCPS has an obligation to follow the regulations, provide meaningful opportunity for input from the stakeholders of this school. We ask that you ensure that the process in Regulation 8130.7 is followed and that the individuals attached to Landmark Career Academy are provided timely information on the fate of their school. And I have a petition to uh, give to you, uh, Mr. Moon, signed by a number of individuals who both work at the school, attend the school, parents from the school, and members of the Fairfax Education Association. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. The next speaker is Dennis Beebe to be followed by Suji Phipps. My name is Dennis Beebe, and it's been my privilege for the last 15 years to be a teacher of science, math, social studies at Landmark Career Academy. Our academy is a unique, different alternative. Kids who come to our school are not failures, they are a work in progress. They come to us not having been kicked out or suspended. They are just coming to us voluntarily as an alternative and they develop a very close relationship with each other and with the staff and their parents are a part of the process as well. Now, over the last 20 years, as she said, we've graduated 294, and those students have been very successful in many aspects of their, of their, of their careers. Some of them, one of them is a nurse, a surgical nurse at the Innova Hospital. Another one uh, recently came to our uh, reunion we held uh, about a week ago 
uh, 65 uh, people came to that reunion to renew their relationships and to uh, express their, their uh, uh, feelings about our school. One uh, lady who's now an executive director of one of the uh, corporations in Seattle flew in just to be with that class reunion. So they really developed a feeling of school and community. And because of that, they are successful. We have graduated about 86% of the students who have come to us, and of the students who come to us, only 5.6% did not graduate. So this is a very successful dropout prevention program, and we would hope that you would look at it on its merits, that you would look at it, see how successful it is. It's very unique. We don't have anything like it in uh, the Fairfax County. We have academies, but the academies are not the same as our academy, which is a diploma granting school. So we would hope that you would save our school. And in the attachments to our handout, we can show you some of the reasons that we think we've been successful. There are 12 things that we identified that we do and that you should do if you accept and continue this model. So please reconsider and save our school. If anyone would like an additional one of these binders, we'd be happy to give it to you. Thank you. The next speaker is Suji Phipps to be followed by George Vassera. Hi, my name is Susie Phipps and I'm the parent of three students at Bailey's Elementary School. Our family has been at Bailey's for eight years and we have five more years to go. I wanted to come here tonight to say thanks, especially to Sandy Evans, for your efforts not only to help us name the campus, but to bring the, re the needed relief to our community. Last night, FCPS held a meeting at Bailey's Elementary where the parents and the community got to vote and choose a name for our new campus. The FCPS Department of Professional Learning and Accountability staff did a great job of explaining and facilitating the voting process. This is quite a job at Bailey's since our meetings are always loud, crowded, and full of children. What I saw was a process that was well thought out, thorough, and allowed all members of our community, both parents and neighbors, to participate in the naming of our campus. It is my understanding that students, teachers, and neighborhood associations don't normally get to participate in this process, so it was nice to see everyone included. Over the past few weeks, the students were able to suggest names for the new campus. Then, they voted to decide three student-generated names that were brought to the meeting last night, along with the three parent-generated suggestions. We had over 1,200 students voting on, the, on their school name. My kindergartner even got to vote, and she was thrilled. The names that the, student came, the students came up with were fantastic. My favorite was the Bailey's Cat in the Hat School. Sadly, that did not make the final cut. At the meeting, there were four progressive rounds of voting. By the second to last round, there was one student suggestion, one neighborhood association suggestion, and one parent suggestion remaining. While my favorite name was not ultimately selected, we had two excellent, excellent candidates in the final round of voting. I look forward to having the school board finalize this process by supporting the name selected by consensus at last night's meeting. I appreciate all of the hard work that the folks in the Department of Professional Learning and Accountability and the excellent staff at Bailey's Elementary did to make the naming process happen. There was clearly some thought put into this process as it was slightly different than the naming of most new schools because of the neighborhood association and student participation. It is exciting that we are applying a name to 6245 Leesburg Pike, but what I am most excited about is the fact that we are getting the school. And for that, I want to give my heartfelt thanks to the school board, especially to Sandy Evans, Superintendent Garza, and also to Jeff Plattenberg and his facility staff. Thank you. Next speaker is George Vassera to be followed by Sharice Glassman. Good evening, uh, Superintendent Garza and school board members. Uh, I want to talk about three things tonight. First thing is, I guess, uh, uh, 
the Landmark uh, Academy. In terms of that, you guys had, a, I think the gentleman passed out a booklet. If you see some of the pictures there, I think you have Governor Warner there and now Senator Warner. And I think that'd be a great topic that you t uh, talk with him this Sunday at three o'clock when most of y'all will be there. He's already been contacted on this issue because obviously this is something that he has advocated for uh, in terms of dropout prevention. So I think that is definitely something on his mind. He's been already informed by his staffer, Marvin Figueroa, who I talked to for a good 30 minutes today on. So hopefully you guys can come in Sunday and talk to him because I definitely will talk with him about this. Uh, second thing is and the whole issue of the Bailey's name. I, I respect what the community has done, not done. You know, it's, it's, it's a nerve landmark, but at the end of the day, I think Thurgood Marshall is definitely a good name you need to think about and maybe even table this for another day. I don't know if you're gonna vote on this tonight, but maybe some time on this will uh, you have. Third and most important thing I'm here and talking about is strategic plan. Um, you guys had a work session last Thursday on this, and you guys are in the process of that. Not too impressed with uh, the eight slide presentation that you guys had for a $180,000 contract that you guys gave to this company. Uh, I love Dr. Jamitra, don't get me wrong, I have questions on Dr. Lada and the, and the lady who's gonna run this show. Uh, with this said, strategic plan, the community doesn't even know about this. You guys are asking them to advocate for budget against the board supervisors this year. You're gonna ask them about maybe potentially sleep later on in April or May. Now you're gonna ask them a strategic plan. Pound for pound strategic plan is by far the most important thing. It's gonna affect our kids for the next decade. But there's even the, the community doesn't even understand anything about this. And I really have hesitancy on the time frame. They said end of May for community input. You don't even have time to talk with the Board of Supervisors over this. I'm not talking they're going to go meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Great. I need you all to bring this as a school board retreat topic so you guys can hammer it out because you're not going to win year after year fighting the Board of Supervisors. You might win this year, but you guys need to come to priorities straight. Everyone talks about it. You guys all applaud Kathy Hudgens in her speech the other day, but at the end of the day, you guys aren't working together on both sides. So I need, hopefully you guys go that extra step so it's not, it's not always a fight every year with the board. You guys talk about the budget, CIP, facilities, different aspects come together as both boards is elected and also then you, in the community will win. Then every year there's not hot topics. You guys have a thing that's going to be the list that drives it and everything. Uh, aspect on that is I'd like to know the, the questions that they're gonna give out now because they, they've done this before so they have the questions. Second is Dr. Garza had asked for their product, what they've done in other districts. So I expect that with maybe in the next week and if you can provide that on board docs, just loop it out in there so the public can see that. Because I tell you, I promise you, MSAOC will look at this and we're gonna have our own strategic plan. I can care, other advocate groups won't even know what's going on by the time they know they're not gonna have time to input except for just give simple comments. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Sharice Glassman. Superintendent Garza, uh, Chairman Moon, and distinguished school board members, thank you for having me today. I'm here to advocate in favor of naming the school, Third Good Marshall School in Bailey's, um, in the Bailey's area, for actually the obvious reason, legacy. You heard one of the teachers here talk about legacy in great detail. She talked about Justice O'Connor and the legacy she made and how, how important that is. And I really don't have to tell you, you're very smart, you know who Thurgood Marshall is, but I was told by some people in Bailey's that they did not know who Thurgood Marshall was. This was very upsetting to me. I was actually the education chair of the NAACP. Thurgood Marshall was a member of the NAACP. He was the Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court from 1967 October the 1st, 1991, and he was nominated by John F. Kennedy, and he was the 96th justice, and, it's the and he was the first African-American justice before becoming a judge. He argued, the Brown, as my colleague pointed out, he argued the Brown versus the Board of Education, which allowed desegregation of the public schools and allows my African-American son to be able to go to school in a public school. My mother was a teacher all her life, and she taught me about the legacy of Thurgood Marshall and what it means and how proud it is to know who Thurgood Marshall is. As has been said, his widow actually lives in Bailey's Crossroad, and what a wonderful opportunity it would be to have that school named after someone who actually lives in the community. Um, I would leave you with this, that we have a school by... Uh, by the name of Jed Stewart, he was a Confederate general. We have another school by, that's called Bailey's, which is named after a circus leader. It's actually almost um, 
I would say even incensed that I have to come before the board today to ask that Thurgood Marshall be considered with a Confederate general and a circus leader. It's almost unconscionable. And I ask you to be the conscience of, of the school. And I leave you with this quote, and this is a quote that Thurgood Marshall said. He said, let's talk about equality. He said, when asked for the definition of equality by Justice Frankfurter, he said, equality means equal means getting the same thing at the same time in the same place. So I urge this board to consider naming the school the Thurgood Marshall School. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have a student representative of matters, and Mr. Ash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so first up, uh, last, uh, last week, the uh, Student Advisory Council had a meeting where we pretty much had uh, almost an open forum where um, one, one of the uh, school administrators basically opened up the discussion to um, working with students to really uh, get to uh, topics that the, the students cared about and the students uh, felt weren't being uh, adequately addressed. Um, it covered, um, what, one, of, one of the common ones was uh, mental health and general stress level, which was uh, later covered in the uh, student um, sh uh, shadow program uh, school board f uh, mock forum. And then uh, I actually uh, di didn't know that that topic would be coming up at the forum um, and had already scheduled a uh, informal meeting with a couple student, uh, student leaders who had been very outspoken uh, on the mental health issue. We met um, last weekend to really discuss what we, uh, what we as students could do um, and how the county could proceed. So uh, the, the first thing we came up with was we intend to support um, the, the two proposals that were referred to uh, a mock work session. Um, I hope, uh, I, I trust that those will eventually make it to the board itself, um, and I intend to support those when they do. Um, those those uh, proposals, again, are to um, make the, the depression screening, which is currently an opt-in program, it's, it's available but not advertised at every school. Um, beyond that, it's left up to the uh, discretion of the school administrator. Um, and so really, I think first just making that an opt-out uh, program would, uh, at the very least, um, it, it's, it's a step. It's extending a program we already have. It's not uh, particularly difficult to do, certainly doable. Um, the, the other suggestion from the work session, uh, from the mock forum, was to uh, engage in adult education classes about uh, mental health and wellness because um, the school can only do so much at some point the pressure is also coming from uh, the home and so re um, re re con let's see um, teaching teaching parents about the effects that they can have and the positive uh, difference that they can make from uh, a home perspective is really important uh, in solving the problem because it's not just going to be the schools, it's not just going to be the parents, we all, uh, the students, parents, and uh, teachers, and entire school uh, community have to work together to solve this uh, issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ash. Now we have action items. Uh, there is only one action item, which is confirmation of action taken in closed meeting. This is the portion of the meeting where the board will confirm any action regarding issues that were discussed in the closed meeting. These issues may include the action taken regarding students who have been recommended for expulsion by the division superintendent. Board members have discussed each individual case, and at this time, we'll make several motions to confirm the recommended action. We have a motion coming from Mrs. Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to expel a student for being at school under the influence of an illegal drug and for possessing an illegal drug and drug paraphernalia at school with the intent to distribute. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Smith. All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. The vote is unanimous. The motion passes with a Mrs. McLaughlin absent. Uh, we have... 
We have a committee report from Mrs. Strauss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I served as chairman of a three-member hearing committee along with Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Reed. And I move to expel a student for possession of an illegal drug at school with the intent to distribute. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Smith, Ms. Smith all those in favor? Motion is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Strauss. We have a motion coming from Ms. Ms. Hines. I move that prior to June 15, 2014, the instructional personnel identified in closed meeting be notified that their contracts will not be renewed. One, those who hold a provisional or conditional license expiring 2014 or earlier. Two, those who hold a provisional or conditional license expiring 2015 and 2016. Three, those with incomplete license data. Four, those missing or failing Praxis II exams. Five, those with license pending with Virginia Department of Education and missing or failing the Praxis II exam. Six, those who hold a professional license that expired in 2013 or earlier. Seven, those on a one-year hiring agreement. And eight, those who will be uh, rift uh, reduction in force due to low student enrollment. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Smith. And all those in favor, raise your hand. The vote is unanimous with the Mrs. McLaughlin absent. The motion passes. Thank you. Next, we have a consent agenda. Our adopted rules of parliamentary procedure, Robert's rules, provide for a consent agenda listing several items for approval of the board by a single motion. Most of the items listed under the consent agenda have gone through board committee review and recommendation. Documentation concerning these items has been provided to all board members and the public in advance to assure an extensive and thorough review. Items may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any board member prior to the meeting. 5.01, approve the minutes of March 6, 2014 regular school board meeting. 5.02, Confirm the separations for the period of the beginning February 1, 2014 and ending February 28, 2014 as detailed in the agenda item. 5.03, adopt the policy 1401, standards of quality mandated by the Court of Virginia, policy 1402, school evaluation and accreditation, policy 1530, volunteers, policy 1705, employee advisory committees to the superintendent, policy 3280, Controversial Issues, Policy 3840, Community Events and Student Performances, Policy 4020, Orientation for New Employees, Policy 5820, Equipment for School Activities, Policy 6860, Broadcasting Curricular and Extracurricular Activities or Events, Policy 8612, Security of Buildings and Grounds, and Policy 8613, Emergency Proce Procedures. 5.04, adopt a resolution nominating April Federal Credit Union and an April Federal Credit Union Foundation, the Fairfax County Chamber of Commerce, and Time Warner Cable to the 2014 Virginia School Board Association Business Honor Roll. 5.05, approve the alternative accreditation plan request for Key Center, Kilmer Center, Mountain View Alternative High School, Bryant Alternative High School and Fairfax Adult High School for submission to the Virginia Board of Education as detailed in the agenda item. 5.06, award the contract for Hybla Valley Elementary School Kitchen Addition Project to Sorensen Gross Construction Services in the amount of $559,000 and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. 5.07, appoint individuals to serve in committees as detailed in the agenda item. Is there any objection to approving the consent agenda? Hearing and seeing no objection, the consent agenda is approved. Next, we have a new business. Please bear with me. The following are new business agenda items. There will not be a vote tonight on these items, but action is scheduled at a future meeting. Section 
6.01 accept the infrastructure financing committee report as detailed in the agenda item. 6.02 name the campus at the Eastern Elementary School site, Bailey's Upper Elementary School for the Arts and Sciences. And let me call on Ms. Evans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone who came out tonight either to speak on the issue of the naming of the new uh, Bailey's Elementary campus or who came out to support other people speaking tonight. Um, I did want to explain a little bit about this. As someone had mentioned delaying the vote. The vote isn't tonight. This is on as a uh, new business and the name will be approved by the school board on at our next school board meeting on April 10th. So this is another opportunity for people to come out and, and, uh, and watch any discussion that we might have. I did want to talk a little bit about the process. Um, we did have a number of community members come out and it, it was um, uh, an, an excellent process where the students, all of the students, I think it was more than a thousand students, weighed in on what their recommendations for a name might be. So they came up with three names. They um, voted on six and, and offered three names. Parents then, uh, through their PTA, came up with three names, and the civic associations were invited to come to the meeting and offer any name that they wanted to offer. Uh, the civic associations were contacted. Uh, Cluster Assistant Superintendent Douglas Tyson started contacting the civic associations, the five civic associations, in early March, so to make sure that they knew that this event was coming up, so they could alert their membership and also be there to provide any any name that they wanted to offer from the floor. And nobody um, other than those compiling votes within the school knew what they were. So community members uh, and, and, and parents didn't really know. So that was raised as well, and, which is the typical process. I've gone through a naming process once before for Mason Crest Elementary School. And so the community comes in and uh, offers things from the floor. They consolidate. We have different rounds of voting. Uh, this was a little bit different because we specifically invited the civic associations um, to, to come and, um, and, and offer anything that they wanted to offer. So uh, they, they were informed, and it was certainly also posted on our website, um, which is on our homepage, and uh, it links to the Eastern Fairfax Elementary Paran Bailey's campus, and so the notice was there on um, at the top of that page. So, and it went out in keep in touches. It went out uh, through all the 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 means that we have for the Bailey's community. So we did try to do as much outreach as we possibly could to make sure that people knew that this this was going to this meeting was going to happen, and so they could participate. And in fact, you know, it was a, a pretty full house, you know, as pretty much always at Bailey's Elementary School. You, you call a meeting at Bailey's, uh, as Dr. Garza knows, and you get a pretty full house uh, pretty much all the time. So that was, it's always nice to see that kind of participation. Um, after the first round of voting, we did have, we had eight names to start with, three from the students, three from the parents, and two mm -hmm. offered by Ms. Civic. Ms. Evans, yes. I think that that's all on the A. Uh, on the board. That uh, is, and, but I think uh, for, you know, for, for those watching who have watched this, I, I, I won't take too long, Mr. Moon, I promise, but I did want to uh, just let people know that there was a, uh, several rounds of voting and we did ultimately come down to two, uh, two names and uh, one of them was Bailey's Upper Elementary School for the Arts and Sciences and the other was Bailey's um, Elementary School for the Arts and Sciences Thurgood Marshall Campus because uh, one of the requirements was that Bailey's be in the name because this is a new campus. And lastly, I just want to, I want to thank all the community members who came out last night. Uh, it was a good discussion and uh, advocacy, and I particularly want to thank those who um, planned, organized, and ran the meeting, uh, starting with Cluster Assistant Superintendent Douglas Tyson and Cluster Director Deirdre Lavery, of course, Principal Marie Lemon, and especially our um, professional learning and accountability team, Nina Thomas, Heather uh, Petrozini, and uh, Christy D. Taylor, who also facilitated the voting. And a special shout out to Diane Crandall, who's um, uh, Mr. Tyson's EAA, and uh, Melissa Fields, my executive um, administrative assistant, who, who gave us excellent support last night for the event. So um, I look forward to, um, to coming to a conclusion on this in, um, on April 10th. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Schurz, did you want to talk about this one? You know, we're not 
We're not discussing on this one tonight, so if you could just limit your remarks to a Senator, maybe clarifying I, question. I understand that we're not voting tonight. That's why it's new business. Um, I did just want to um, offer a, because Mr. Stork and I went through a, a pretty um, laborious naming process for South County. And um, when, I, when I hear that, you know, typically home, home associations aren't included or members of the community aren't included, that is not what we experienced at all um, in the South County uh, community. And in fact, we went through a pretty labor intensive effort to ensure that, um, that electronic surveys went out and that, that uh, staff had to um, calculate addresses so that we ensured that people simply lived within the boundary because it's the community school as well. So, you know, as we go forward, um, I, you know, while it is, you know, a school in your district, and I, I certainly don't want to take on um, a process that you've done, I do um, have concerns that we're, we're just transferring a name or um, actually with the extended name of it and that it appears to be something different than every other elementary school when we say it's an academy for arts and sciences or, or however the name spells out. It, it has a tone to me that a, appears to be offering something that's completely different than any place else. And I don't know that that's necessarily in the name of a building the place to put that. Um, whether the programs that are offered within the building represent that, but having that as a part of the name. So, um, you know, on a going forward, um, I would, you know, I would expect that when we do vote on this, that I think that there's probably going to be some discussion about, um, and, and Mr. Stork and I were pretty passionate, or we were pretty passionate about um, ensuring that there was a lot of community involvement when we went through the process. And, um, also about what a building which is going to be here m long after we're all gone um, has been carefully considered and that the education purposes that it stands for have been well considered and that it's that that's part of the process so. okay uh, I am I understand Ms. Evans we're not going to discuss further on this one we'll do that at the next meeting I understand that this is not a new school it's just part of the existing Bailey's a separate complex. And, and the current can, name is Bailey's, Bailey's Elementary so School we will, for the we will Arts and Sciences. That. That's not a new piece okay, of that. Which, which that is, I, yes. I understand. And you follow the policy and that, but we'll discuss that at the next meeting, not tonight. 6.03. Award of a contract, recommendations to award the contract for the Ravensworth Elementary School renovation project to the lowest responsible and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of our facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. 6.04, recommendation to award the contract for the West Potomac High School turf field project to the lowest responsible and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. 6.05, award of a contract. Recommendation to award the contract for the Mount Vernon High School turf field project to the lowest responsible and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the division assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. Next, we have a superintendent medals. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I want to thank uh, everyone for their support at the joint Fairfax County School Board and Board of Supervisors budget work session earlier this week. Uh, we had quite a number of our employees and principals and other, other uh, folks interested uh, in this process that turned out to hear the discussion, and we're very appreciative uh, of that support. Uh, we remain concerned uh, about the financial challenges we face in fiscal year 15 and beyond particularly in light of significant cost increases outside our, of our control. Um, I appreciated the collegial discussion. I think we all did, and I look forward to continuing our work together as we finalize our budget discussions. Um, we are thankful for the support that we have felt from parents in the community, and we ask that they continue to, to stand with us and follow this process. Uh, the decisions that will be made over the next 
several months will likely have a profound effect on our school system um, and the 185,000 students for whom we're responsible. Along with a number of school board members, this past Sunday, I attended the Fairfax County Regional Science and Engineering Fair. Um, I will tell you, I was so impressed with the caliber of the projects um, and the students. Uh, I was also pleased to see so many of our high schools uh, well represented uh, in, in the winners. Uh, it was just wonderful. I want to thank our science teachers who got these wonderful, talented students. And I will tell you, you can't help uh, when you attend events like this to be impressed and very hopeful for the future. Um, these bright students are going to be scientists and doctors and researchers of the future. Um, I only can imagine that they will discover advancements in science and in medicine and other fields that will likely change the world. Um, I just want to give a couple of examples of some of the, the topics that these students um, presented. Uh, we will have um, about 40 uh, different scholarships. Um, well, let me, let me give you some examples. Here are some of the grand prize winners of projects. Supraja Chachari, uh, who's at Marshall High School, the effect of turmeric on memory curves of planaria. Parth Chopra from Thomas Jefferson, a novel agent-based model for the spread of tuberculosis. Uh, and I could go on and on. Um, again, I want to um, congratulate all of the students that participated. I want to also thanks our, thank our science team, Myra Th uh, Thayer, Tim Horizon, Charles uh, Sabature, and many others who, who worked on this effort, Robinson Secondary Schools for hosting. Um, it was a, a great um, undertaking, and we're very proud. And again, I want to extend our congratulations and appreciation to our librarians. Um, I have a particular fondness for librarians. I love libraries, and I think it's just a wonderful place to, to really extend and value and, up, and lift up learning. Um, and I also want to, again, congratulate our National Board Certified Teachers. Um, we're just very, very glad to have them in our school system. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Reiser. Next, we have a report. The first one is from Audit Committee, Mr. Stork. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we had a meeting on uh, March 10th. We covered a number of items. Uh, we reviewed our current audit plan, as well as we reviewed some prior audit reports. We have a risk assessment uh, process we're getting ready to undertake, and in fact, uh, Today, I, I found out that we have um, contracted with the firm that will be doing the risk assessment, and so we'll be talking about that in future meetings. We also have a couple uh, additional um, hires in our, our, um, our internal audit office, and we got a status on that, and I understand we've hired uh, two individuals, and they are to start shortly. So we're, we're uh, really making excellent progress in strengthening and, and further uh, broadening our audits. Uh, we have uh, also, local school activity fund bank account audits, which are on the website. Anybody can go look at them and see what, uh, see what those results are, but they're generally positive. We have, um, as earlier announced by our chairman, we have hired uh, a new audit manager, and we're very pleased in that uh, uh, he'll be starting with us shortly, and he will be a, a point person on our, our risk assessment, our comprehensive risk assessment that we're doing, which will help shape our, our final audit um, office in the school board office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Storr. Next, I want to go to a budget committee, Mr. Backup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On March the 10th, we had a meeting of the budget committee, and we reviewed um, with, with our uh, financial staff, we had a review of the key elements of the advertised budget, and then that was followed by a discussion of, uh, I'd say, about a dozen frequently asked questions and um, we were given a handout about that, and of course all that information is posted. And then of course, as, as Dr. Garza mentioned, uh, we had a meeting with the Board of Supervisors on Tuesday where there was uh, quite a, an exchange of uh, information between uh, both boards and um, uh, an excellent presentation by our superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Perkop. Uh, let's go to Mr. Smith for Infrastructure Financing Committee. Thank you. The board reviewed the completed infrastructure financing committee report and it is on tonight's agenda for new business and we'll be, we will be voting on it at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And let me go to uh, Ms. Tammy Delano-Kofax for strategic planning. 
Uh, last Thursday evening, we met with the ECRA group who will serve as our consultants that will lead us into the strategic planning process. Um, we met with the three staff that will be managing the project. This was a two hour meeting and this meeting just for information purposes was, was a follow up to actual individual conversations that each of us had with members of the ECRA staff, staff groups. So we too believe that strategic planning is one of our top priorities and we look forward to working with the ECRA group to achieve our objective. Thank you, let me go to Ms. Hines. Thank you. Um, the Public Engagement Committee met two days ago, actually, for our annual meeting. We discussed planning for the annual education summit. The date of that summit will be September 27th. Um, why are you laughing at me, Mr. McElwain? <laughs> you said annual meeting, so you, you mean more. I'm sorry. Oh, our monthly meeting. Thank you. <laughs> I had annual in here in my notes. You're sorry, our monthly meeting was a couple days ago. Our education summit is an annual event, which will take place uh, September 27th. Uh, we're still working on the location, and uh, we're, we will bring uh, details to the school board at our uh, April 23rd work session on what exactly will be, at, uh, will be happening at the education summit. We also talked about our student leadership program. Uh, we talked about our mock forum outcome, and as you, I hope, know, the mock work session will be on April 28th at 6 p.m. We hope as many school board members as possible can come to listen to that. Um, we also discussed our newsletter template, that it is uh, up and running, but not all board members have tried it, so we're, we're still sort of... Um, uh, beta testing it, I guess, I'm not sure. Um, and uh, so please try it and, and let PEC know how it goes. Um, and then we made one change to our public engagement plan uh, that we uh, changed it to, to uh, reflect that we actually do budget outreach all year long. Thank you, Ms. Hines. Uh, let's go to our board members, starting with Mr. Strauss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I want to congratulate Kira Becker, we had Pi Day on March 14th, and Kira, who is a student at Thomas Jefferson, um, along with her colleague students, um, presented a wonderful video on YouTube, which we all enjoyed. So Pi Day, that was uh -huh. March 14th, 3.14, 3 3.14, Pi. So that was lots of fun to see the kids do that. Um, the uh, McLean Project for the Arts. We are in the season of our arts show for our, all of our students in the McLean area. We've just finished um, proudly uh, showing the art projects from our elementary schools and our middle and high school students will be getting ready for they, their big show in another week. Um, the science fair that Dr. Garza mentioned was wonderful. I congratulate all of the students and the projects are absolutely wonderful. And we, of course, those of us can never understand any of them and I always figure that must be really good. So uh, very proud of our students. Um, the, uh, in the, in, again, in the science realm, on March 29th, the 28th and the 29th, DC First will be sponsoring the very large robotics competition for the greater DC regional area. And I know many of our robotics teams will be competing, including Herndon High School, and I know they are absolutely wonderful, and uh, Thomas Jefferson, and, and uh, so there'll be many young students displaying their very creative um, uh, robots who will... I be playing a form of basketball, as I understand. It'll be a team sport. I will be there. Um, I also want to thank the Washington Post Young Journalist Div uh, Development Program as part of the CAPES program that many of our high school theater students and journalism belong to, uh, the Washington Post is a co-sponsor of the program and they uh, provided a wonderful writing workshop for some of our very best uh, writers last weekend. I want to thank um, Nelson Presley, who is a Washington Post writer, who did the workshop and uh, one of the exercises students had to very quickly write to a prompt and then we shared them and discussed them. I was blown away with the quality of the writing from some of these very young students and it's, it's really um, wonderful thinking that some of these kids we will probably say, I knew you when. Mm -hmm. um, it was phenomenal, phenomenal talent. So uh, with that, yep. on to Ms. Evans, thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to uh, thank everybody who came out for my budget town hall meeting. 
on March 11th. I, I appreciated the PTA presidents who met with me before just to talk about different Mason District issues. And um, it was a, a good crowd of people and a good conversation that went kind of beyond time. I appreciate Mrs. Quinn, um, uh, Chief Financial Officer, presenting to the group and also answering many, many questions that came from, um, from the community. I um, also want to congratulate Real Food for Kids for their second annual culinary challenge that was held at Falls Church High School. I'm afraid I had to run before I got to sample everything, but what I did taste was just marvelous. And so I, uh, it's, a, it's a great annual event, and I, I look forward to going to that every year for a while now. They've done a marvelous job of um, helping us get healthier, fresher food to our, our kids and um, with, with, um, with some very creative um, kids who are, are uh, cooks that um, I think we'll be hearing more from them as well. Uh, and last but not least, certainly, I, I appreciate what Mr. Ash said uh, about the conversation he's having on mental health and stress. This is an area that I, I care deeply about, and I'm glad to see that this is what our student leaders have chosen as their topic, because I do believe that uh, this is going to be a, a key topic for us coming up. So. I'm, I'm glad we're we're all pursuing this. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I could quickly, people are kind of looking Dr. about what Manager. that buzzing is. That is an amber alert, and so all of our warning systems will. That's that buzzing you're hearing occasionally. Thank you, Dr. Manager. Continue on, Mrs. Schwartz. I thought I was the only one that issued amber alerts on my children. <laughs> so um, that's a that's a board joke. Um, happy Vernal Equinox to everyone. Um, I call it the infernal equinox because this is when my allergies begin. I know Dr. Garza read a couple of the science fair topics. I'm waiting for the next science fair, you know, to the effects of turmeric on, on fall allergies and spring allergies. Um, I participated in the last week uh, on a uh, Springfield District budget town hall um, at the West Springfield Government Center. Um, extremely well attended. Um, with Supervisor Harity and, um, and Ed Long, the county executive. Uh, that was excellent. I also delivered my own budget presentation at Union Mill Elementary um, to parents and staff uh, and attended the Irving Middle School PTA meeting. Uh, most notably, I finally, um, in the wake of storms and, and delays, two hour delays, had my uh, third student town hall at Lake Braddock Secondary, and I have to say that the comments were so incredibly articulate um, by the students. They covered an array of topics, um, focused uh, not only on homework load, the relationship of homework to work that's done in the class, uh, busy work versus meaningful work, um, coordination amongst teacher um, and collaborative teams on homework loads for students across block classes, but certainly on the mental health um, issues that, uh, that my colleague, Ms. Evans, and Mr. Ash have brought up. Um, very much of a concern, and I think that when we have a composite of all of the information that Ms. McLaughlin and I have had um, across our three student town halls, it'll be very um, insightful, and I look forward to continuing those. Um, I was very happy to attend the regional science fair held at my home school, Robinson, and I'd like to congratulate all the participants, uh, those who won, um, and especially the grand prize recipients who are headed to the state championships, I believe, this coming weekend. Um, and a special shout out to my student leader from last year, Jimmy O'Hara, who is a Robinson student, for um, some of his wins. Um, upcoming next Friday, March 28th, I'm having a Springfield district-wide PTA presidents meeting at Sinkster Elementary. That's next Friday, March 28th at 10 a.m. at Sinkster Elementary. And um, I just want to congratulate um, uh, my colleague, Mr. Stork, and the audit committee and the work of those of us who are on the panel selection for uh, the audit position. Uh, really, some of our best work, uh, second only to our, our very best work who seated, who seated at the, to my right, a couple seats down. Um, I think that um, Dr. Horton coming on board in this audit position is going to be uh, a, a new 
um, a new best for, for the school division. And lastly, I would like to make sure that students, um, young women who are in piggybacking on the regional science fair uh, awards are aware of the Virginia, the governor's Virginia Council on Women STEM essay and scholarship contest. Uh, the, the due date for that is fast approaching. It's due on March 30th. And these, the students who are eligible are young women who um, are juniors or seniors in, uh, in our schools, and you are to write a, uh, an essay. You can find the information at commonwealth.virginia.gov slash information slash council, C-O-U-N-C-I-L dash on dash women. And the awards for this are gonna be given by the governor and the first lady and they're, they're significant. Um, there are many thousands of scholarship dollars available for um, the low, low entry price of writing an essay about why you think you want a career in science, technology, engineering, and math. And so I hope uh, that the young ladies in Fairfax County take advantage of it. Mr. McLean. I know we look alike, but... Um, Mr. Mr. McElvin. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, I echo everyone who says they had fun at Science Fair. I think it, that is one of the most important events we attend every year um, to recognize the achievement of our students. Um, as someone who was there um, only 10 years ago, um, I know how important it is to have elected officials there. Um, tomorrow I will be speaking at the inaugural um, flow day at um, Thomas Jefferson High School. Look forward to seeing all the students there. Maybe Will will show up and uh, make fun of me. But. I'm actually presenting. Oh, you are? Okay, I'll have to um, film yourself and I'll, I'll see you later. Um, secondly, um, happy birthday to uh, Mr. Paris. I know... Um, you, you, this, he thinks this is his last uh, birthday in Fairfax County. Uh, we'll see about that. Um, but, Public schools. Um, Public. So we'll be thinking of you next Tuesday. Uh, and finally, I look forward to seeing my colleagues in New Orleans. Um, I'm just glad we don't have to tack on a, a whirlwind tour this year um, to the end of it to, to go to Lubbock. Um, <laughs> as a wonderful reminiscences. Okay, um, that's it. Have fun. Just a reminder that the Sully District budget meeting is going to be Thursday, March 27 at 7 o'clock at Rocky Run Middle School. Mike Fry will be there with county staff. I will be there and I will have Kristen Michael from our budget office and it's a great chance to talk about the budget with both the supervisor and the school board member in the room. So I urge people to come out and help us get what we need for our schools. Thank you. Mr. Anakovex. Following on the heels of Ms. Smith, I will tell you about my budget meeting, which will be next Wednesday, March 26th at 7 p.m. at the Franconia Government Center. I will be there with Supervisor McKay and Susan Quinn from our staff will also be there. Uh, last week, I had the pleasure of attending the District 10 chorus assessment um, where I got to hear the beautiful voices from 13 high schools over a two-day period. It was a, a lovely calming, beautiful serenade that I got to listen to for, uh, for several hours. And then tomorrow, I look forward to participating at Springfield Estates in their career day. So I'm excited to be there tomorrow morning. Thank you. Ms. Hines. Okay. Um, wanted to mention that there will be two upcoming budget discussions in the Hunter Mill District. Uh, watch for a keep in touch from me. We're planning them right now. I wanted to thank Supervisor Kathy Hudgens for uh, her efforts to reach out to the community. Her office is planning this and they reached out to me to coordinate with them. So it will be a coordinated conversation with uh, your supervisor and your school board member. And really it's just an effort to be out there and hear what people in the community have to say. Uh, this week I was able to, um, to uh, attend a press conference by Mission Readiness, which is a group of uh, retired military brass. And um, at the press conference this week were uh, two retired generals and a retired admiral. And they have taken on Mission Readiness as a, a, a project which focuses on readiness for uh, the world of work, but particularly the world of work in the military. They're obviously very concerned about making 
making sure that our uh, public school graduates are ready to serve in the military and ready to keep our country safe. And they have, I think very wisely, focused on early education, the kindergarten readiness gap as the most important thing we do in education and the best investment we can make. And they are focusing in Virginia on the Virginia Preschool Initiative, the VPI, and have noted that there is a gap between uh, the need in Fairfax County and uh, the amount of funding that we are getting from the state of Virginia. And uh, so they want to uh, highlight that gap and help us close it. So I was very grateful to those gentlemen for doing that and I will definitely um, keep up with them. Also in the same vein, I attended the um, Head Start Policy Committee. These are parents, Head Start parents, who actually make policy decisions in Head Start. That's why Head Start is the gold standard for early education because it really empowers and involves parents. I want to thank all the parents who take their time out to do that. They are, by definition, parents of small children, so it's not easy to do that. And uh, the tremendous work of staff who support them. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, before I attended the science fair the other day, I attended what it, I sort of have begun thinking of as the alternative science fair, which is the mini makers fair. Um, it was the first annual in Fairfax County at uh, South Lakes High School and Langston Hughes Middle School in Reston, and it was fascinating. Um, my colleague, Mr. Belkov, was there, and also Bob Simon, the founder of Reston, who this year is turning 100. And this is also the 50th anniversary of Reston, so it's a big, big year in Reston. I wear my 5100 button everywhere I go. Um, I want to thank the volunteers who put that together. The Mini Makers Fair, it's basically everybody who's involved in making things. I mean, it is as broad as that sounds. It's kind of STEM. As, as broad as you can think of it, everything from uh, people making bicycles to 3D printers. I finally saw a 3D printer for the first time and there were several there. There was also a South Lakes High School student, a junior, who had just set up on a table his alternate fuel project. He's in the middle of working on it. It probably wouldn't have been worthy of a science fair entry, but he was explaining, you know, because he wants his parents to buy him a car. And they said, well, that's fine, but you have to pay for the gas. So he's all right, well, I have to try to figure out how to <laughs> use some other fuel for my car because I can't afford gas. So it was just a really fascinating day. And Bob Simon was like a kid in a candy store walking around looking at all those great ideas because he's an idea guy. Um, also, in the last couple weeks, I uh, kind of poked my head in at the AAUW um, STEMtastics event at Northern Virginia Community College. These are middle school girls and their parents who came for a morning um, to uh, sort of to, to chat with women who are in the STEM field in a lot of different ways. And it was really a, a great morning. Um, I had a lot of fun there. I want to also thank Systemic Solutions, um, which is a joint project of Fairfax County Public Schools, Northern Virginia Community College, and some other players there. We're working very hard to, um, to get everybody coordinated on STEM education. Just had one other thing I'm very proud of. Um, South Lakes High School students, we saw, uh, I think at our last meeting, uh, when we talked about STEAM, the South Lakes High School students who are putting together the art installation, the pyramid-shaped art installation for Lake Thoreau and Reston. Well, the other night, they went before the Design Review Board, Reston Association, and um, had their design approved. And if you live in Reston, you know how hard that is to do. So they had to do a lot of persuading and a lot of planning. And they definitely, the Design Review Board people said that they set a standard for other people coming to the Design Review Board to get their projects uh, approved. So look for it in May. They will be building it probably in early May. It will be in the middle of Lake Thoreau uh, for about six to eight weeks. That's it. Mrs. Reed. Thank you, Chairman Moon. Gosh, we all have a lot to say tonight. I attended a uh, budget town hall meeting for the Providence District this week with Supervisor Smith, and it was uh, put on by the Providence District Council. I wanted to thank everyone who came out, and special thanks to Kristen Michael, who attended and made an excellent presentation and helped field questions. Uh, there were about 50 people there, and uh, we had to close up shop at 9 o'clock, and there were still lots of questions. So I uh, encourage people to write to us and write to the supervisors that people had a lot to say, um, and it was a very, very productive discussion. Tomorrow, speaking of budget, I'll be at the uh, Fairfax Education Association tomorrow to talk with folks there about their perspectives on the budget. 
Um, I also this week had a conference call with VSBA. I don't know if anybody else listened in on the, the webinar, but it was kind of a recap of what happened down in Richmond or what didn't happen down in Richmond uh, this session. And, uh, and so that was kind of illuminating. Um, the only piece of information I'll share is that April 24th, they're gonna go back to it in a special session and see if they can uh, come to some agreement. Um, is it March 24th or April 24th? Maybe it's March. It is April. Okay, I was right. That just seemed like it was a long time away, but okay. Um, and, the, and of course, you know, that's important to us because we still don't know how much money we'll be getting from the state. Um, in the category of there's something for everyone in Fairfax County Public Schools, I wanted, I usually am the person that is citing some sports achievements, but this week I wanted to highlight some different things. Congratulations to the Kilmer Middle School folks who won first place in the Virginia State Chess Championship for the division of K-8. And also good luck next week to Marshall High School who are competing in the finals of the National Cyber Patriot Competition. And what is that, you ask? Okay, um, team members will compete against teams from across the country and will be tested on their knowledge of computer operating systems while securing their network from external malicious attacks. So this is what some of our kids are doing for fun, and uh, it's just amazing to me that, um, that I, I think I have mentioned them before. I think every year that they, they, they show up at these national finals. So uh, that again, just once again proving um, if you're a student, there is something for you here in the schools. Everybody has a place. Thank you. Mr. Wankoff? Uh, first of all, I'll just remind everyone of the key dates regarding the budget. Uh, April 8th through 10th is an opportunity for everyone in Fairfax County to speak at the public hearing at the Board of Supervisors, with the Board of Supervisors at the Government Center. Uh, I believe they vote on their budget on April 29th. We vote on ours on May 22nd. And as we get closer to our vote, um, there will be more key dates for um, our own budget process. Um, I also attended uh, two budget town halls last week. The first one was uh, in Springfield with Supervisor Pat Harity and County Executive Ed Long. And uh, I was also uh, in Braddock uh, with Supervisor John Cook and uh, County uh, Financial Officer uh, Susan Data. And as uh, Ms. Hines mentioned, I did also go to the Maker Fair in Reston and it's pretty amazing. Uh, last, I'd like to tie together a couple of things I heard from both uh, Mrs. Strauss and Dr. Garza. So, uh, speaking of pie, uh, I thought I'd let everybody know, in case you didn't know, in 1897, the Indiana General Assembly uh, considered a bill that would have defined pie as 3.2. And, <laughs> this is true, and I'm going to read a sentence out of uh, Wikipedia. I'm going to cite my source here. The bill never became law due to the intervention of a mathematics professor who happened to be present in the legislature. So I'm hoping that one of those science grads that we were talking about, at least one of them shows up in a legislature somewhere. Mr. Van Kamp, uh Anyway, this is my recollection of a pie from my elementary school days, if whether this flies. 3.14159265358979323842626. Is that good enough? It's not enough, but it's not enough. Not enough. All right, I try. Mr. Moon's feeling the power because his team won tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stork. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to start off by, by congratulating Mr. Chairman for starting the Holly um, Race for Technology on uh, a, a week ago Saturday. Um, he started and he actually did finish the race, so I, I'm, I was very impressed. Where's your, where's your shirt? I, oh, you know what? It's in my car. Oh, man. So ah. we're, we're going to have to, we'll have, we promised them that we'd wear the shirt, but we'll have to, we'll have to make up for that, Mr. Moon. It was a great run and, and, and a great time, and, and they have something called a color run, which is really it's a wonderful thing for kids to do. It's, it's essentially the kids run through an obstacle course, and the teachers get to throw colored chalk on them, which they take great delight in doing. And the kids, of course, take great delight in having the different colors of the rainbow all over them. So it's, it's really a, a wonderful community event and obviously raises money for the school, too. Um, 
I had Saturday office hours uh, later that morning and had one, many, many constituents there. And I just want to remind folks that I have Saturday office hours the second Saturday of every month. Um, so it'll be on April 12th. I'll be at uh, the Lorton Library from 10 to 12 and the Sherwood Hall Library from 12.30 to 2.30. So always welcome. And there's usually a note in the paper to remind folks about that. Uh, had a great meeting with the West Potomac High School uh, 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 Athletic Boosters Club. We talked about the turf field and their track. And their turf field is coming. It's on the agenda, new business agenda, and, and look forward to uh, approving that in our next board meeting. But everybody's very excited. Particularly wanted to thank Rick Gennario, who's co-president this year with his amazing leadership on this issue and, and great focus and effort to make sure that West Potomac's athletic facilities and really the school overall gets the support and the facilities and equipment that it needs to, to be a, a world-class school, which I truly believe it is. So uh, thank you all boosters and thank you in particular, uh, Rick Gennario. We had um, um, a fully funded FCPS uh, meeting, a couple of those where we've been talking with folks who are very involved with funding our schools and, and, and uh, really trying to encourage folks to get involved and write their, their uh, delegates and senators as well as, and in particular, the uh, Board of Supervisors attending meetings, emailing them, calling them, and just engaging with them about what they want uh, for this next budget that the Board of Supervisors will be looking at. And obviously, our, my advocacy is to fully fund that because our kids need it, and we think it will make a true difference for all of us. So I urge everybody to do the same and get involved. I have two PTAs I met with, which were wonderful this past week, Island Creek and uh, Fort Hunt Elementary School. Did budget presentations, talked a lot about that. There's a lot of lack of understanding about what is in this budget and, and what's not. In particular, they were very, very interested in, in uh, being able to roll back some of the, um, the cuts we've already made at the elementary school level, as you might imagine. And, and Dr. Garza, I, I, I used the information that, that you provided us about uh, the value of, of reducing that, uh, or actually rolling, keeping the same level of, of uh, student-teacher ratios in elementary schools that we have now, and essentially the cost of that being about, um, I think it was uh, $22 million, I think it's uh, roughly $22 million. Uh, and that is of great interest to any elementary school uh, parent, and, and even the many staff members that were there. They, they felt a, a great burden could be lifted from them if they could at least keep things as, as they are. And that really is up to all of us to, again, advocate and let, let uh, our elected leaders know what the difference that that can make in, in their community school. And uh, last but absolutely not least, I wanted to thank my colleagues as well for their work on the selection uh, advisory committee to, for our audit manager. I think we did do very good work. And, and in particular, I have to uh, thank um, particularly Kathleen Crenshaw, our human resource um, uh, staff member, who did a wonderful job in, in keeping us corralled and focused as well as helping to to assess and, and ensure that we, we found and, and, uh, and vetted the right candidate, and, and we are pleased that we have. And also, Teresa Weatherman, who is our internal auditor, and she's done a wonderful job, not only of engaging in the process and talking with the candidates and sharing them with them what their experiences are, but, but doing it in a way that's truly helped them to understand the value and the opportunity that exists in coming to work at Fairfax County Public Schools and coming to work with Teresa Weatherman. So thank you. Uh, Ms. Weatherman and Ms. Crenshaw. Okay, uh, Mr. Shree, for a quick go back. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Moon. Um, I stand corrected. I did go back and check. The General Assembly is beginning what is known as Special Session 1 on March 24th. So for all we know, on April 24th, they may be having session two if they don't uh, resolve their issues. But I did want to clarify that. Uh, and it's something, of course, that's very important to all of us. And last but not least, uh, congratulations to everybody for moving the, um, the audit positions forward. Uh, it's a very exciting day. Thank you, Mr. Sri, for the clarification and correction, actually. Uh, at the Harley Elementary School's 5K race, Mr. Stork ran, and I walked. <laughs> and Mr. Stork was, you had to see his outfit. He was professionally dressed. I mean, I just I mean, regret that I didn't have a, my camera with me. And out of about more than 400 runners who are walkers, he came 41st. He's a good runner. Congratulations, Mr. Stork. 
With that, this meeting is adjourned.